Hi, Dion from Inflation Support Services here, and I want to do a little chat, maybe a check-in, see how things are progressing in my life. But I, I wanted to do a, a chat about trauma survivors having their voice, and I think it's an important thing for trauma survivors to actually have, and it is something that is often told to to not have a voice to to move on to get on with it stop stop carrying on like this sort of thing or in some regards the more that you have your voice the more that the the truth of what has occurred that what is believed to be the perfect relationship the perfect parent has a different narrative there's a different side to the story and sometimes in sharing that can lead to people disbelieving in you and not wanting to to enter into a story and sometimes it's like with a belief system what we believe to be true be it our favorite football team our favorite singer our favorite this or that when there is an alternative view that is actually being presented that is not so nice and is different to what we uh, believe in we can tend to shut that out or shut that down or only want to believe in one form of uh, view which is becomes a, a bias in a way so sometimes when something is presented from a trauma survivor uh, that is different to the the well created view of what is actually occurring uh, in the real world uh, there can be a, a tendency to want to shut that down it's like we only want to hear the pretty words sort of thing we only want to hear the nice things and sometimes that nice thing is just what's being nicely presented and it's a presentation a persona of what someone wanted you to believe in so sometimes when we do hear the other side of the story uh, people find it that uncomfortable truth to be truly uncomfortable it's like it's more comfortable to believe in what is nice and what is actually accurate so sometimes when trauma survivors start having their voice, especially when their voice has been something that has been continually shut down, because if you think about, like, if you're being in opposition to what something, someone wants of you, then that's going to be an inconvenience to that person that's wanting something from you, similar to a, a robber breaking into your house sort of thing if you sort of said you know can you get out and it's like well why do you why are you telling me to get out sort of thing i came in here to steal your stuff okay stop making me feel guilty there can be that logic sort of thing where you having a boundary of this is my space this is my body this is my emotions this is my feelings this is who i am as a person stop devaluing me stop belittling me can be a great offense to the other person because if you're being an inconvenience of having your own self-value having your own self-interest having your own self-respect then it stops the person devaluing you it stops the person taking of your self-worth and that's a major inconvenience to them because that's what they're there for so when we start to speak up for ourselves and simply say no this is not acceptable i i don't like this this is not in my best interest uh that can be a scary thing for a trauma survivor because if you're grown if you've been raised in a household or been in a relationship where this has been promoted then your disbelief system of yourself becomes your belief system because you're being conditioned to believe that who you are as a person is entitled to have no worth is entitled to have no uh, value because this is an inconvenience for that person if you start to have your own forms of self have your own identity and it can even be in a recovery journey where you start to get better and the other person is actually threatened by you getting better because it means that you will go away because they're starting to put up the lock on the door, the boundary, or they might be starting to close some doors on some people that have been clearly taking of their own identity. So when we start to have our voice, we're starting to stand up for ourselves, stand up for that inner child, stand up for who we are as people, uh, that we are not here to be taken of, that we do have a right to uh, life as everyone else that we are deserving of things and deserving where it's not 
where we feel selfish, just deserving of our right to be a human being, not just a source of supply. And when we start to do that, it can be actually a lonely journey. It, it's kind of like, well, I mean, if you've had friends that are heavy into the drink and you decide, oh, you know what, I might give up drinking. And then you realize that those around you don't like you giving up the drink because that, that that's how they self-soothe, that's how they have fun, that's how they connect sort of thing. And now you're disconnecting through their form of connection, which would be alcohol. So sometimes, people can be quite bitter about that because you're getting better it's like oh that you, you think you're you're not good enough for us anymore so that thinking that you're not good enough anymore is you starting to have what feels good enough for your own self and sometimes that will mean a separation from what what, what was known what was familiar what was comfortable for your own self for your own patterns of behavior because uh, misery likes company sort of thing so those that are associated to the, the the caring or loving people in our life have normally had the same sort of conditioning sort of thing I mean it is not to say it's a blanket all statement and similar to what I was saying before the more that you start to speak up to for yourself the more that you present a different narrative to what is actually been happening the more that those people that really wanted to believe in that uh, perspective that that persona what is being presented by the, the the abuser in your life they they don't want to have a bar of you because that goes against their conditioned belief and what is comfortable and anything where you present a different view it's like oh no it, it becomes a dismissal statement it's like oh no it's it's not that way uh, i think you might be being silly and that it's like they're not really that but I think you're just taking it too far <laughs> these sorts of things you know what happened for you you know your version of events uh, and if you're having to justify to people your reality and your reality is being belittled or not even being heard then it, it, it's kind of a case where those people might be in the same boat as the abuser where you're version of events is uncomfortable for them to hear it's more of their discomfort rather than your reality of what have, has happened to you so it can be a lonely road uh, to recovery and it kind of leads me into uh, like kind of a, like a check-in sort of thing it's like definitely for myself it's like uh, kind of karma waters <laughs> pardon the pun it's to a point in my life where the old patterns where I had to survive to, to be on the ready, to be hyper vigilant all the time, are, are starting to subside. It's starting to calm. I wouldn't say it's like, oh, peace and love and, and that. I would just sort of say a lot of what I've had to struggle through is no longer becoming a struggle. I still have struggles, of course. I still have things that I'm dealing with. But it, it becomes where that separation from the storm you start to, to, to walk into or flow into calmer waters and through that through, has been just a holding on to myself when I left the ex-marriage it was fo feeling following a feeling of lightness and that not like following the light it was just like I felt so heavy and constricted because I was in fear of being in that and it's been a lonely journey in that it's like I've had friends that have gathered around me and I've had friends that I've had to let go of and some friends that just purely through the connection that they had uh, with the ex-wife it's like it, it's an easier road just to not even try and present a different side of the story it's just allow them to allow them to be them and allow them to have that whatever form of connection rather than having to prove myself to someone which is never something that I want to do with the family and that it's like still no contact and all that and it's like there's still that emotional struggle but I'm forming other connections it's like for the Taoist temple it's like it's becoming my my other family at the end of this very busy week that I'll be having this week uh, I'll be helping out with a, a, a breaking the house ceremony which I won't go into too much just out of respect but I'm being more and more included into that and it does feel like a family and also, like, I went and 
saw my good old friends Dom and Danny uh, who have been touring around Europe and now settled back in Australia and it was a really good uh, connection and I, I really the, the, there have been two people that have been very valuable and very influential in my life and very loving and caring towards me and uh, a bit, like even Dom was one of the people that suggested I, I go see my uh, psychiatrist rather than my GP uh, in regards to when my mother was acting up uh, because that was actually what prompted the whole journey towards my uh, re-diagnosis uh, from schizoaffective to CPTSD. So very influential people and Danny is a very loving and caring person and um, I adore them both. And it's getting into a point where it's like it's a settling in feeling where the, the, the rough waters are settling and it, it's starting to be more of myself and when I do reflect back a lot of what I was told when I chose to do the opposite when I chose to have my voice has been the better outcome it, it's almost like not being arrogant but it, it's almost like knowing trusting the gut knowing what works for me because everyone knows what works for themselves but that works for themselves not for myself <laughs> so it's taking in that so definitely when it comes to the Afflation Support Services business, there's going to be a lot of uh, redevelopment and rework and once I get the Potato Method or properly certified, I've done the test, I've passed it, um, I've just got to do the case studies and finish off the rest of the required viewing and it means a new beginning also for Afflation Support Services, back to how it should have been in the first place and I'm fully grateful for my awesome support work clients it's like the chucking more hours at me sort of thing because I'm just naturally good at what I do and the EFT tapping and the potato method together is going to be a huge powerful component in helping people de-stress their um, emotions and get their breathing to where it's just not on the mat it, it's in their everyday life that they can functionally breathe so yeah it's having a voice and making sure that the, the voice is not a, a, like a, a pointing or blaming voice and all that we, we want to learn from our experiences and, and sharing of our experiences and knowing that some people are, are just not capable or have the capacity or even the understanding or even the emotional maturity or even just the time or energy to, to sometimes hear quite heavy emotions and sometimes it's finding those people that can actually hear that voice and, and respect that voice and sometimes it is just holding a space similar to like hugging a person it, it, you're, just, you're holding a space you're holding that person in that moment you're not trying to be anything but a comfort in that moment and when we've been just filled with like disbelieving statements statements where we're, we're not allowed to be ourselves sometimes connecting with a person where we can just be heard and be seen is a huge healing step to where we are valued because when you're heard and when you're seen you're of value you're being heard someone's taking the time to actually hear you and that might sound like a small thing to most people but for people where that's never been allowed or allowed to happen it's like it's a massive thing so Keep being your awesome selves, keep going with that flow, and uh, I look forward to doing more videos. I'll see how I go with this week, this week's going to be extremely busy, so I'll try and chuck in some uh, videos here and there, but it might be a bit of a quiet week for me. <laughs> Very busy week. So I'm Dion from your closest support services, and keep on flowing. Bye for now.